Good morning, everyone. Welcome. This is Victory Quezon Avenue. If you're here for the first time, welcome. We're glad that you made it today. And we're also looking forward to get to know you. Um, I'd like for everyone to please stand up on their feet right now as we begin to read our word. And it comes from um, Psalm chapter, 20, chapter 102, verse 12 to 22. And let me read it to everyone today. But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. You are remembered throughout all the generations. You will arise and have pity on Zion. It is the time to favor her. The appointed time has come. For your servants hold their stones dear and have um, pity on her dust. Nations will fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth will fear the gl your glory. For the Lord builds up Zion. He appears in his glory. He regards the prayer of the destitute and does not despise their prayer. This, let this be recorded for a generation to come so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. That he looked down from his holy height, from heaven the Lord looked at the earth. To hear the groans of the prisoners to set free those who were doomed to die, that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and in Jerusalem his praise when peoples gather together and kingdoms to worship the Lord. This is the word of God for all of us today. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are asking, Father God, that you will give us an understanding of what this particular verse is all about. We are declaring, Holy Spirit, that you will be with me as I preach your word today, and as I proclaim your word today, enlighten everyone as I have been enlightened, Lord, in preparing for this message. Enlighten each one of us, God, on why you're adding us in this church in view of what you're doing in every nation. Thank you for this time, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. You may now take your seats. We are going to be doing something today, uh, different today. And as you all know, meron po tayong parang buffet table. Maglalabas po mamaya ng kape para sa akin. No, just kidding. And um, the reason why we wanted to do something today, because we also would want to um, look at, you know, the, the, the reality of what, as a church, we are doing in spite of what is happening globally. We are looking forward to how God is building His church in every nation. Every tribe, every nation is victory's way to explain to everyone who we are. You know, we, you may be coming in here for, uh, for a few um, um, time lang, or maybe, um, you know, you've been here for quite some time. It is a moment for us to discuss to you who we are as a movement. Yes, we exist to honor God. Yes, we exist to make disciples. But our mission statement in Victory in Every Nation, which we are a part of as a global movement, is to honor God by establishing a Christ-centered, Spirit-empowered, socially responsible um, churches and campus ministries in every nation. That is who we are. So therefore, when you look at how we build this church, this is nothing just about me. Okay, it's not about me, hindi po ako ang bida, although instrumento po ako para gamitin ako ng ating Panginoon in this season. In the same way, I am praying that the Lord our God would likewise allow you to see God, what would be my participation, why you added me, you're adding me to this church. So hence, we will look at this particular psalm in, in Psalm 102 in view of who we are, and in view of what God is doing around the world. Christianity is not meant for us to be lived out by ourselves. It has to be shared. Christianity has to be proclaimed. People need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ because in our week two, all nations will worship the Lord. And this is what we want to talk about today today. And likewise, we're also looking at what is God doing around the nation, well, per, well particularly in the, in the churches, where in the nation that we have at every nation. Okay, major redundant po, but this is who we are, every nation. God is doing something around the world that we probably are not aware of, 
And that is why we have some stories here that we will be sharing uh, to us uh, later on. And then we will also be looking at how we as a congregation and how you as an individual would see what God is going to do in and through us. That is why in our series today, we would encourage everyone, number one is to pray. There is one important thing, that we, the truth that we have to do, and that is to pray. The Bible says that God wanted this church to be a house of prayer for all the nations. Kaya nga nagalit si Jesus because people are turning it into a den of robbers. Remember that story. Because God wanted our church to become a prayer for all the nations. Next is to go. When you go out, you know, it's, and, you know, interestingly, a lot of the Filipinos would like to go abroad. And, and I pray that it will not just be for greener pastures, although I have nothing against that. Okay, kung kailangan talaga, ano magagawa natin? May the Lord our God be with you. But I also pray that we would likewise see why God is bringing me to a particular nation. We're hoping that the Lord our God is going to use us to proclaim His Word, to preach the Gospel, and to continue making disciples. More so, as a church, we would also want for everyone, you may not have the, the, you know, the free time okay, to go. Okay, kahit na 10 days lang yan, na mission trip yan, or kahit full-time ka mag-missionary, you probably won't be able to do it. But not just praying, not just going, but we would ask for everyone to partner with Every Nation Missions through our financial giving. But today, we are going to look at the Word of God on how all nations will worship the Lord. The first truth on how all the nations will worship the Lord is actually seen in the verse likewise. That's why we want to see as we worship the Lord in all the nations, remember God's greatness throughout all the nations. How many of you believe that God is great? Now, this may be just a concept that God is great, but let me ask you another question. How many of you believe that God is great in your life? Can I see your hands? You know, when you talk about God is great in my life, there may be some challenges that may, I may be going through in my life. There may be some hurdles that I have to, um, to look at, but I believe in the midst of whatever I'm facing, my God is great. Can you say Amen. How great is God in your life? Remember, when you come to worship the Lord, remember how He is great in your life. God has always been great then. He will be great today, and He will forever be great. Great is our God, and it's most worthy of all our praise. I want to encourage everyone that remembering God's greatness is not just limited to you. Although, Mark, I know from your story, God has been great in your life. If you look and listen to Mark's story and how, you know, how he went through a lot of these things, I realize God is great to you, Mark. But God is not only great to Mark, God is great to everyone. My prayer is that you will experience and encounter the greatness of our God. But I would also like to encourage everyone, particularly us who are from the older generation, I am of the Generation X. My responsibility is to make sure that the next generation would also proclaim the greatness of our God. There is a generational gap between me and our daughters because our daughters, although they are tucked in in a Generation Z, but they are Alpha Generation. It is my responsibility to proclaim to them the greatness of our God. Parents, that is our role, to make sure that God's greatness would likewise be experienced by our younger generation. Let's read verse 12. Verse 12 says, But you, O Lord, you are enthroned forever. In short, I am born, I will soon pass, but I realize God's greatness is actually going to be forever. So therefore, I want my children to continue living in the greatness of God. Because it says, you are remembered throughout all. Everyone say all. When you talk about all, it means what? It means all. Ganun lang po kasimple. 
all the generations. Si lolo, si lolo ng lolo mo, si tatay, si kuya, si ate, yung ap- nanak ko, yung apo ko, yung apo ko sa tuhod, all the generations. Because the God that we are serving is a generational God. He is not only great in your life, Mark, but He will be great in other generations younger than who we are. Can we all say amen? I wanted to share to you a story of an evangelist in a restricted nation. Okay, we want us to look at, you know, uh, what God has been doing all around the nation that we're probably not aware of. For the purposes of the, you know, the sensitivity of these stories, we actually blurred their faces because what they're experiencing in, in, in their particular nation is actually a, a something that would cost them their very life. But this is a story that's real, a story that is true, an evangelist in a Muslim nation. Sorry, nasabi ko na Muslim nation. Kasi may kita rin naman po mamaya sa picture. Alright, this is actually Mr. A. Pago na pangalan natin si Mr. A. Mr. A so is one of our full-time leaders at our Every Nation Church in a, in a known Muslim world. And um, it's also known to be a nation of full of terrorists. Pag sinabi mo yung bansa, bansa niya, okay, alam mo na itong bansang ito known for terrorism. He is actually a gifted evangelist and leads other Muslims to Jesus Christ. Mr. A is actually a former imam. When you talk about imam, you're actually teaching the Quran and he is a scholar of a, a, the Quranic truth. And he was led to Christ by one of our missionaries who are actually laboring in that particular area, in that particular nation. But even if he is an Islamic priest who taught Quran, he saw the flaws in his Muslim belief and he started to make some questions on why people are talking about the beliefs. When he heard the gospel, he found Jesus Christ as the, as the Savior and the Lord, and he had seen the power and the authority to save the world. When the pandemic hit, Mr. A actually was forced to return to his province, and there he began to preach the gospel to people that he meets every day. One of them is actually Rathindra. That's not his real name, but he is the first disciple of Mr. A. Rathindra is actually a student in the university, and like Mr. A, he's also a professing um, a Muslim. But Rathindra was so excited you know, to hear about the gospel that Mr. A wanted to really teach him and train him to become a fellow evangelist like him. During the time that there was a promise about the face-to-face classes, Rathindra was so excited to meet his classmates and to share about the love of Jesus Christ. You will see in the background, yung pong mga nakablur din ng mga faces na yan, ito po yung mga kaklase ni Rathindra na sinesera niya ng gospel. How many of you believe that God has been great in one generation to the next generation to the next generation? The Thindra is unstoppable. During her face-to-face classes, he would talk about Jesus Christ to his family and even to his friends. The Thindra continues to share Jesus with his classmates. What happens now to Mr. A? Mr. A continues to become unstoppable. He continues to preach the gospel to fellow imams. The imams are talking to Mr. A because he has a repute to be talking to them about life's principles and values. Mr. A has been talking to these fellow imams and teaching them about Jesus Christ, and he started to teach the book of Luke to his fellow imams. How many of you believe that generations will experience the greatness of our God? Can we all give God a clap of praise? What does this have to do with us as a church in Victory Quezon Avenue? We believe that as a church, we are to proclaim the greatness of our God to the next generation. I am not sure whether your kids are going to be working abroad, but teach them about the greatness of God. 
my respons- our responsibility in training up our daughters, we wanted them to really be well-versed in the English language. They were asking us, but di mo tinuturuan yung anak mo magtagalog? Because we already have a global perspective in mind. We believe that our daughters, once they grow up and they're already adults, when they say, Dad, I want to go to this nation, Dad, I want to go to that nation, they will be well-versed in the, in the universal language is called English because we want to have a global perspective for them. But likewise, in our own family, we also would want to teach them about the greatness of our God. This is our role as a church. Let us believe that God will reveal, we will, we will look at and remember the greatest of our God, not only in our generation, but in the generations to come. How will nations worship the Lord? Truth number two is we have to revere God's supremacy in all the kingdoms and in all the nations. This time, so we are, this time we're going to look at not just the kingdoms, but even the nations. Because during these moments, there were still kingdoms back then. But today, you know, we look at nations, different tribes, different peoples, different language are all a conglomeration of different nations. Let's look at verse 14. It says here, For your servants hold your stones dear and have pity on her dust. Look at verse 15. It says, Nations will fear. Kahit anong bansa yan na, na uh, may, may a verse to the gospel, kahit anong bansa yan na, 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 na pinapersecute ang mga krisyano, the Bible says nations will fear the name of the Lord. Why? Because it goes back to our first point that God is great. God is greater than any of those nations combined. The greatness of our God has to be proclaimed not only to the generations, but likewise to the nations. All kings of the earth will fear your glory. We realize today that many nations are in the lookout of, uh, you know, and leaders that would guide them. And just like in the Philippines, we had, you know, we, had, we recently had a transition of leadership in our nation Nations likewise outside of the Philippines are hopeful, they're optimistic that God will give them a a, a leader who would run the nation in a way that it's going to be an example for the young people to follow. You see, last year, or uh, yeah, last year, we in the Philippines, we've planted a church in every nation, Panama. Panama is in Central America, and one of our senior pastors, he's also a good friend of mine, Pastor Rico, had to go to Panama and really bring his entire family to plant a church in Panama. This is a story of Roberto, and in one of you know, the, the testimonies, the interviews that they had of Roberto, Roberto saw, uh, Roberto saw the value of leadership. And Roberto saw himself as part of the leader that God is going to use. Let's, re- let's look at the story of Roberto through this video. Let's watch the video, please. Siempre he pensado que en Panamá tenemos muchos líderes, pero nos falta liderazgo, tener un buen liderazgo. Y la única manera de poder llevarlo es de la mano de Jesús. Y la casa matriz de todos estos líderes siempre van a ser las universidades. Y sí, siento que esa sería la meta que tiene Dios conmigo, como que me enseña a mí a ser una mejor persona, un buen líder, y que me enseña a mí cómo enseñar a otras personas a ser líderes. Eduardo es uno de los frutos de tu faithful y generosa partnership con el gospel. Thank you for your active involvement in reaching the next generation here in Panama through your generosity and prayers. Praise God. You see, what we are doing here in Victory Quezon Avenue is likewise what Pastor Rico and our missionary Mark Gonzaga is also doing in Panama. We are reaching the next generation. Why is this important? As Roberto mentioned, you know, the future leaders of any nation, in every nation, 
are actually in the campus and they're being trained. And that would probably be the future leaders in the political realm, in the business or the corporate. You know, just like Doyle Canlas, our campus missionary, we never stop reaching the next generation because this is who we are as a church. As a church, we pay homage to our sovereign God and lead others to do the same. I pray that God will likewise use you to lead others to Jesus Christ. That was the very clamor of Roberto. He wanted to be trained. He said, enseñarme para enseñar a otros. It means that he wanted to be trained so that he will also be training the others. That is how all the nations will bow down and worship the Lord God Almighty. We remember God's faithfulness. We revere God's sovereignty. And finally, we recognize God's deliverance for people to be gathered together in worship. The Bible says in the book of Revelations that every tongue, tribe, and nations will gather together in heaven and they will be worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and that is Jesus. Kung dito pa lang po, dito sa Victory Quezon Avenue, hindi mo na feel mag-worship, kapatid, pagating mo sa langit, 24-7 ang worship. Kung dito pa lang, you feel like worship is just a filler, pwede pang malay, worship pa naman, may 15 minutes pa. I don't think so. Because the Bible says that God inhabits the worship of His people. Then in a worship service, there is only one aspect by which God gets from us. It's our time of worship. When we pray, para sa atin yung mga tao. Okay, when we choose to give, you know, it's para din po sa inyo yung pag nagbibigay kayo. Because the Bible says, give and it will be given back to you. When I give, God does not need my tithes. Hindi naman niya kailangan ng pera. Isa may ari ng lahat eh. So therefore, this is still for all of us. When we sing praise and worship, we give it to Him. That is why I would encourage everyone, come and join us. When we say 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock is the time for all of us to praise and worship God. Because this is what we are doing as a church. But this is not only about here in Victory Quezon Avenue. It is likewise in every nation that we are building a church because people are going to gather together in worship. What is it about deliverance? Let me read to you verse 18 up to verse 22. It says, let this be recorded for a generation to come so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. So that He'll look down and His holy height from heaven and look at the earth. God said, the Bible says that even those who are still unborn, that they will be, you know, they will, they will worship God. They will know who God is. They will praise God. But how can they hear this without somebody giving them deliverance and freedom? Look at verse 20. It says, to hear the groans of the prisoners. You want to know what prison is all about? You're actually captive because of sin. People are looking at Christianity to be, you know, the thou shall nots, as I mentioned last time. But in Christianity, there is freedom. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. There will be groans of prisoners, people who may not be incarcerated physically, but there is emotional freedom. There is spiritual freedom that they need. They need mental freedom. Ang dami po mga tao na kailangan makapakinig ng gospel. And God is going to use you to be the one proclaiming this deliverance to them that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and in Jerusalem His praise when peoples gather together and kingdoms to worship God. Church, we are believing that as a time of praise and worship in this 15 minutes of our time, we believe that God is bringing freedom and deliverance in our lives. We believe likewise that if you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, He's the only one who can set you free. 
How many of you are thankful that God has already delivered you and forgiven you from all your sins? Can I see your hands? Thank you, Lord. You know, this particular truth that we hear is not only to be proclaimed in the Philippines, but it has to be proclaimed all over the nation. This is the story of uh, how God shows His plan for a life of a student in a communist nation. We talked about a while ago, you know, um, um, Muslim nation, this time it is a communist nation. The picture you see here is actually blurred again because the person that we're going to talk about is, you know, we are going to protect them because of what they're doing. Kamla is actually coming from a Buddhist family in a communist nation. She graduated double majors, education and computer science in a Buddhist university in the country. While Kamla was smart, she's also incredibly stubborn and she did not follow rules. She would come home late and would neglect her responsibilities at home. She did not like being told by anyone how to live her life. She either challenged or ignored other people's advice. During the time that Kamla was studying, she encountered an English teacher who, by the way, is actually one of our missionaries working in that nation as an English teacher. That particular English teacher actually introduced Jesus Christ to her. Kamla is actually now one who, share, who has shared the gospel, and she is now walking her faith in the Lord, and she is actually one of those who will be studying in our Every Nation School of World Missions. The gospel is being proclaimed. Kamla is being used by God to bring salvation to the generations to come. Kamla is making sure that the gospel is being proclaimed to, our, to, their, to her nation. As a church, we are proofs of God's power of deliverance from our sins as we become witnesses to other people. Three things we have to remember here in worshiping the Lord as um, you know, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We have to remember His greatness, revere His supremacy, and recognize God's power to deliver us. God has already given you the freedom to express your love and worship to Him. People outside of our nation likewise need to hear God's power of deliverance. That is why we are looking at how God is going to use us to proclaim the gospel to every tribe and every nation. We're going to hear and listen to another story of another person in a Buddhist nation. This time, this is um, Malayne from Cambodia. This is her story, and we're going to look at how God transformed her and how God is going to use her procla proclaiming the gospel to her nation as she goes and journeys with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's watch this video. Raising more local missionaries and staff is crucial in our desire to bring the hope of the gospel to more peoples and nations. Let's listen to the story of how our local church team in Cambodia has been gearing up to share God's love to their fellow countrymen. Chumriyipsu, greeting from Cambodia. My name is Joshua. I'm serving as a senior pastor in EN Cambodia, Phnom Penh. One of the challenges that we encounter here to reaching our Cambodian people as a Buddhist nation, the government even approved that Buddhist is a state religion. So for someone to become a Christian, some people will say that you are betraying your own culture, your own country. In the midst of these challenges, we have opportunity also. The strategy that we are using effective for us here, we build close relationship, and then from there we can bring the gospel of Jesus to them. God not just call us to make disciples, but call us to raise leaders and to change the nation. So thank God, after 12 years in the church, God able to raise a five-time local staff three in turn. So next year, we will send the three local leaders we will be going to SWM to be equipped and to be empowered to become a better communicator of the gospel. Live so 
Hello everyone, my name is Malang. I am one of the church interns in Every Nation Church Cambodia. Before knowing Jesus, I live my life in a insecurity, fear, doubt. I just want to leave from this country. I try my best. Unfortunately, I failed. Through this failure, it is actually a redirection for me to know who Jesus is in my life, to have hope and to know the real purpose. He called me this time. He gave me the new eyes. He gave me the compassionate heart to see and to feel the love like how Jesus does to his own people. There are so many changes and trends in the society right now that the youth get lost which ones to follow. Therefore, the gospel is leading. It is very crucial to change and the youth need to be transformed through only Jesus that they can change even their own interests and their own nation. At the same time also we are the church, we need to pray. We know that through prayer that we see the power of God, we see that God will reveal to them and open their heart and their mind to know Jesus here in Cambodia. All contrary, Thank you so much for your generosity in sowing and giving and praying for the nation of Cambodia. Because of your prayer and your partnership, we are able to reach more local, raise more local leaders and plant more churches here in this nation. Raising leaders to fulfill God's mission is just the beginning of what God will do. Pray with us to see more lives change as we bring the gospel to the different cities in Cambodia. Thank you for helping us raise and send workers into the mission field. So let's continue to preach the gospel, the hope of every tribe and every nation. Praise God. What you heard, the stories you heard today are just a tip of the iceberg. There's still a lot more stories we wanted to share with you. Do you know that as an Every Nation missions partner, you can actually have access to the stories of whatever is happening around the world wherein we have an Every Nation church? We would encourage us, yes, God is great in my life, but there's a lot of great things that God is likewise doing around the world that we probably are not aware of. Becoming an Every Nation missions partner is a responsibility for me to be part of what God is doing globally. This is our Every Nation Philippines. We have 196 Filipino missionaries that are actually laboring in 38 nations. I cannot go to all the 38 nations. I cannot even go and talk to the 196 missionaries. But I can pray and I can give. My small generosity would actually allow God to continue building His kingdom in every nation. Starting next year, we will have an opportunity to go out and be part of the 10 days missions in 2023. And these are some of the nations we are going to be preparing ourselves to help out in our church planting. 10-day missions is an opportunity for us here in Victory in the Philippines to go and participate for a small time of two weeks. 10 days lang po ito. But you know, that 10 days would actually radically change your life. It could be 10 days for us, but for the person receiving the gospel, eternity is the cost of it. There are so many opportunities for us to be part of every nation. In fact, we even established our school for world missions in 2023. It is a, a time when people are going to be part of you know, what God is doing in every nation missions. This year, we have these students coming from all the different parts of the nation, and they will be coming here to the Philippines to be trained. The gospel of the kingdom of God is advancing. And I am asking everyone to pray to God on the role that you, have, you ought to, uh, to play. I am praying for a nation at the same time I am a financial partner to every nation missions. As a church in Victory Cason Avenue, we are partnering with some of our um, uh, missionaries in, in Europe, in Asia, and even in Central America. Pastor Rico Rico Fort, you know, has just um, opened up a place for them, a time for, for them to, to build a worship center. We partnered with him. 
this is our responsibility now to pray and partner with them. You're going to be watching a QR code on behind me, and if God is leading you to become an Every Nation Missions Partner, this is the QR code that you have to uh, just to a scan on your phone. I'm going to give you a few seconds or a few minutes to scan the code and be part of the Every Nation World Missions Commitment Form. It will only be a time of one year, and then you can either recommit or you can go and decide with God what you will do. Let me just pray for you before you scan this code. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we're excited, Lord, with what you're doing in our lives, in our nation, and even in our church, Lord. But we are believing, Father God, that you are, Lord, doing a lot of great things, Father, in the, to the rest of the every nation, God. We want to participate in this, Father God. And we do declare, Lord, that the little that we do, whether that would be in prayer or our generous contribution, it will bring forth your gospel that will be proclaimed. Lord, I pray that you will speak to each one of us on what we will do, Lord, when it comes to us becoming a partner in Every Nation Missions. Lord, raise up partners in our congregation in Jesus' name. You may now scan the code if you feel like the Lord is telling you to partner as an Every Nation Missions on behalf of our Filipino missionaries, our senior pastors, and our churches in every nation. Maraming maraming pong salamat for your partnership and your generosity.